Ukrainian army destroys systematically Russian air defense systems. Russians no longer control skies. The Ukrainian defense forces have adopted a systematic approach to destroying the air defense of the Russians in Crimea, which speaks not of a local but of a global scale. As noted by Ukrainian military political observer Alexander Kovalenko, strikes are now being carried out on enemy targets in the occupied parts of the Donetsk and Lugansk regions and directly on the territory of the Russian Federation. All this means preparing for a more effective use of subsonic cruise missiles as well as creating conditions so that any Russian nuclear threat is neutralized in its infancy, the analyst noted. Kovalenko noted that it is difficult to say exactly how many Russian radar stations have been destroyed since April. Strikes on airfields in Belbek and Zankoy, where 91N6E and 92N2E were successfully burning, were the first stage, a kind of reconnaissance in force, after which the real massacre of Russian radars began, he noted. Kovalenko reported that the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense destroyed the Nebo-U radar station, which not only reduced the Russians' view of the Ukrainian sky at altitudes of more than 10 kilometers, but also blinded the S-400 operating in this direction, and then the 48YA6 combat mode radar K1 Podlet K1, the expert explained. Kovalenko emphasized that in June, the area of attacks expanded to the territory of the Russian Federation, in particular to the Belgorod region. But the real cherry of these attacks should be considered the raid of kamikaze drones on the Voronezh DM over the Horizon radar station, which is part of the missile attack warning system for detecting the fact of the launch of intercontinental ballistic nuclear missiles. At the same time, it is important the point in this strike was that the kamikaze drone was not intercepted by Russian air defense systems. Kovalenko noted, the low effectiveness of air defense on the territory of the aggressor country is due to high losses in the combat zone in Ukraine. In the third year of the war, the Russian occupation forces not only lost hundreds of units of short and medium range air defense systems on the territory of our country, but are also constantly forced then to compensate in the combat zone, the fastest and easiest way is to transfer it from the Russian Federation to the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine. Kovalenko believes. The analyst noted that the occupiers are forced to compensate for up to 40 pieces of air defense equipment every month and the Russian military industrial complex does not issue such a quantity of these products every month. This has led to an imbalance of short and medium range weapons present in Russia with the minimal requirements for airspace protection, Kovalenko stated. Jala Baramova, daughter of Azerbaijan's prominent economist and political activist Gubad Ibadoglu, has called for the release of her father and other political activists in the country ahead of the UN Climate Change Conference or COP29 to be held in capital Baku in November. Speaking at UN Climate Conference on Friday, Baramova said her father was a critic of oil and gas industry and a corruption fighter. He was deprived of drinking water proper food and medical care during his detention. Despite being released to house arrest, he still cannot receive the urgent surgery needed for his severe heart condition, Baramova stated. Stressing that Azerbaijan has over 300 political prisoners and 20 jailed journalists, Baramova said two independent media outlets have been shut down and many human rights defenders and activists remain behind bars in the country. Speaking on behalf of Yungo, the official children and youth constituency of the United Nations climate change processes, Baramova called for international pressure over the dire human rights situation in Azerbaijan. We urge the international community to ensure safe local and international engagement, facilitate open visa access, and allow demonstrations. We insist you stand with us in advocating for human right and freedoms of those who dare to speak out against all sorts of injustice during and beyond COP29. Ibadoglu was arrested on July 23, 2023 and remained in pre-trial arrest until April this year when he was released to house arrest.
Dear delegates, I'm an Azerbaijani human rights lawyer and speak today on behalf of many political prisoners who are unjustly detained, detained in my country, including my father, Dr. Guber Badolu, who is a critic of the oil and gas industry and a corruption fighter. He was deprived of drinkable water, proper food and medical care during his detention. Despite being released to house arrest, he still cannot receive the urgent surgery needed for his severe heart condition. My country holds more than 300 political prisoners subjected to inhuman conditions. Over 20 journalists are imprisoned. Two independent media outlets have been shuttered and many human rights defenders and activists remain detained in similar conditions. As Yango, we demand action. We urge the international community to ensure safe local and international engagement, facilitate open visa access and allow demonstrations. We insist you to stand with us in advocating for human rights and freedoms of those who dare to, who dare to speak out against all sorts of injustice during and beyond COP29.